introductions or stuff like that. But, <laughs> but yeah, Barry. But anyway, thanks for starting your day off with me. I know, like you just said, you're on the other side of the world here <laughs> with me. Uh, you're doing okay. Everything's good so far. I'm assuming. Yeah, everything's really good. It's just really, it's really good to be here with you, Chris. It's awesome. That. So I guess where I want to start this ad at, and I'm sure you've already had this question probably a million, a thousand times, whatever you mm-hmm. want to say. But so I know mm-hmm. you had a number one book, the 11 mm-hmm. Master Secrets to Business Success and Personal Fulfillment. And mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. you have the book two coming out, Move the yeah. Mountain. So what was yeah. the motivation? What was the background? How did all this <laughs> come about? And we can make the uh, happen from here. Listen, listen, how long do you have? Because it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> we put aside um, one hour, so at least you can give me the yeah, real yeah. version. Okay, cool, cool. Um, uh, the first book, I'll start with that. Um, cool. in, 2015, in 2015, um, uh, I was in the shoe industry in 2000, so about seven years ago now. Um, was in the shoe industry in Australia, so I was in wholesale shoes, so selling to retailers. Okay. And um, I was driving to an appointment to meet a customer and um, I got a phone call in the car saying, Barry, can you delay our appointment an hour? And I'm like, no problem. And the thing that did happen next, Chris, is quite surreal. My car steered itself into a beautifully appointed cemetery. Like it felt like it steered itself. I don't know anyone that's buried there. I just went into this cemetery into the northwestern suburbs of Sydney. And, and I was driving down these big, beautiful, wide, open roads, crisp blue sky day, beautiful canopy of trees, you know, all these gravestones around me. And and I thought, you know, this is a good place to kill the hour, more or less. Um, so I got out of my car um, and I started walking amongst these gravestones. Um, and you start looking at the names and you start looking at the years that people, you know, were born and people passed away. And you start doing the maths, you know, in between the years, how old people were when they died. Um, and then you, you kind of realise that... Um, not everyone dies in their 80s and 90s. You know, you were looking at 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds that passed away prematurely, you know, in their view, obviously, prematurely. Um, and, and you start to have a... I started to have a bit of a realisation over my own life. And and this, this wave of... Um, how do I put it? This wave of um, uh, what I was doing in life wasn't lighting me up. Like, selling shoes was great. I was providing an income for my family. But there was this yearning in me that I couldn't quite get out. Um, And that's when something funny happened to me and kind of scary at the time. I don't know, just remembering back now. um, I actually felt three words bombard me um, on a level that I can't, still can't, it's been seven years, I still can't explain um, how it, exactly felt because it was almost like it was bombarded on a soul based level. Um, and it's kind of scared me. And those three words were live your life. And I thought, you know, not the greatest epiphany in the world. If you want to give me something, give me the lottery numbers. I can really live my life. Right. (laughs) Give me something wild You know, live your life. It's kind of complacent. What do we do with that? So anyway, I, I kind of dismissed it. I put it aside, went to my appointment, went home, family, dinner, shower, bed. Um, And then I wake up at 3 a.m. and the word your was highlighted in my mind as if live your life. Don't live a life based on somebody else's opinions of what you should be doing. And then that got really deep for me and I started just writing. I got up at 3 a.m. and I took a pad and pen out and I just started writing about the things that lit me up right? The stuff that really resonated. And and I I admired people that had financial independence because that gave them the freedom of time to do what they wanted to do. And I love the people that had fulfillment because fulfillment really comes from when you're in service of other people. Like when you throw yourself in the service of people, fulfillment is a natural consequence. So, so I wanted those two areas to collide. So I found 11 areas from people in the world, uh, researching scenarios that, that collided that, that sense of financial independence and personal fulfillment. And I had this kind of, it looked like a manuscript, but I had no idea I wanted it to be a book. It was just a brain dump of stuff that motivated me to keep me going. Um, And then I had this like 100 page script and I'm like, this looks like a book. Um, I wonder how this could happen. I wonder how this could actually be a book. 
Um, and and this is what happens, Chris, when you're on purpose and when you're, when you're on target, when you're on the life that God intended for you to live. This is the green lights happen often and they happen quickly. I had a message on Facebook um, and it was a random message um, of we publish books. If you have a manuscript, we'd love to hear from you. And I'm like, that's random. So I get in touch with John, the publisher, went for a coffee. And, you know, three months later, we had a number one campaign on Amazon um, in six countries and 19 categories. We hit number one. And it was it was it woke me up to um, when you have a purpose and a passion, life sometimes whispers a message. Right. Um, It might not always shout that message. Most of us ignore the message. And I did as well. Don't forget, I went to sleep that night and I didn't really um, think anything of it because I'm thinking, what am I going to do? You know, write like who cares? Who's going to read my work? No one. Like it's. And then all of a sudden, um, something in me just said, just just take the next right move. Just just do it and see what happens. And I think um, for me, that's been a mantra to the second book. It's been a mantra of how I live my life. It's been a mantra of not choking situations. A lot of us want to figure out how something works before we actually attempt it. And for me, I've gone the other way. I've kind of gone... Let's just see where this goes. And I don't know all the answers and I don't have all the pieces to the puzzle and this might just end up being a total piece of crap. But I know that that in me, this is how that stuff that's yearning, this inspiration and motivation, that, that comes out in me. And, and often, for me anyway, and I think this is the way it works, God will say, just take the next right step and I'll show you the following step. Just take the next right step. And it's true, man. Like if you think about climbing a staircase, you don't climb 10 steps at once. You climb one, right? And then the body knows what to do with the second, third and fourth and fifth step. Whereas in life, I think as human beings, I think what we do is we, if we haven't figured out the 20 steps in front of us and we haven't figured out the success that we'll have along the way, if we haven't figured that out, we end up not trying because it ends up being, well, I don't know how it's going to work. I don't, And and it's really counterintuitive because even if you look at relationships, I mean, you have no idea if the person you're dating is going to be a marriage material, is, is going to be a marriage partner for you. Like you have no idea. But what you're doing is you're taking a leap of faith with the information that you've got to then to then see where this thing goes. And I think that's 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 the key for humanity and that's the key for our personal decisions is to just, just take the next right move and then just see where that goes yeah no i agree 100 that you know when you you said green lights and that's been a great book that i read by matthew mcconaughey and it resonated yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's like over my lifespan so far that there's been these green lights or opportunities that i've kind of just avoided you know just like oh that's mm. not for me or overlooked mm. them and just said no 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 but then it was later on and it's like oh man that was my chance i should have took it but yeah. and also you know and, and uh Real quick, there was like one of these things that, and this touched on what you just said last about taking the sleep of faith with like talking mm. with people about your, you know, like in yourself who've wrote books, you know, who've gone on mm. and started mm. six figure businesses that mm. they've taken the sleep of faith and they've made a risk, they took a chance, and mm. you know, they avoided these or got over their limiting beliefs inside mm. their own mm. head. It's like, I got to take a chance at something. And even if it sucks, even if I try it and fails, I at least take yeah, a yeah. chance and learn it. Even yeah. relationships, business, career, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true, Chris. It's so true. And for me, um, um, I help one-to-one clients in Sydney from a coaching point of view. Right. And I, with the pandemic, um, it's transcended into business clients, like it's transcended into corporations, right? And and the system that I help people with pers- on a personal level is very, very similar um, to the system that we help with, with organizational cultures in businesses. And when I get stuck myself and when I don't know what to do next, there's a few, um, there's one Einstein quote that I've really resonated with. And it's the least known Einstein quote that there is. Like a lot of people know Einstein for his... Um, scientific pursuits right the theory of relativity and and what have you and his face is on almost you know you can buy einstein socks now (laughs) and einstein (laughs) underwear like it makes you feel smart right i've got einstein socks by the way they're pretty cool um (laughs) and um and there's the the quote that he spoke about is is comes down to faith and trust right so he said that every human being on the planet 
must make the most important decision of their lives. Like they, you must make this decision and you either do so consciously or unconsciously, right? And that question is this, do I believe that I live in a friendly universe or do I believe that I live in a toxic universe? Like you got to answer that, man. You got to answer it categorically and you got to feel that it's true when you answer it. Now, if you and I are catching up for dinner, Chris, right? right. And we go out to a party and there's 10 of us around the table and you and I are sitting next to each other and we're, and we're chatting and all of a sudden, you know, you look at the six people on your left and the six people on your right and, you know, you pose this question to the table and you say, hey, guys, I've got this question. I'd love your thoughts, right? And then the six people on your left will say, well, Barry, you know, I, I, I believe the world's a toxic place. And, and let me tell you why, you know, they, and, they, and they talk about COVID and they talk about the war in Ukraine and they talk about the world's fiscal situation, finance, all these countries are in debt and they talk about marriages failing and they talk about divorces and children dying and, and all these things. And you, and, and you, you kind of nod your head and you go, well, yeah, that, those are true, right? And then, so for some reason, the opposite part of the table, this feels like a debate. They say, well, actually, Barry, I feel that the world's a friendly place. And, and let me tell you why as well, because I've known marriages that are getting back together and kidney transplants that are happening and babies being born um, and saved and, and people helping out people in Europe right now, you know, people taking people in, strangers taking people in and, and people giving food away and shelters that are always springing up, helping humanity. I, that's why I believe the world's a friendly place, right? So then you look down the middle of the table and then you ask yourself the most obvious question. You ask yourself, well, who's right and who's wrong here? And you come to a realization that they're both correct. They are both living realities based on what their truest thoughts are. And that that thought of the world being a toxic place, they will consistently find negativity and toxicity and people that perhaps don't wish them well. So so when you take the leap of faith in yourself or or, or in a business or a seven-figure business or a six-figure business or whatever it is, you got to kind of categorically say to yourself, well, what do I believe here? Because you can try your hardest to make something work. But if you inherently believe the world is toxic, you will consistently find excuses to why the business didn't didn't work. Um, but if I turn around and I say, well, you know what, I've started this business and I believe that Chris um, is in a situation where he can benefit from this and maybe even help me. I'm going to reach out to Chris and see what he thinks. You know, there's an opinion. You might know people, whatever. And all of a sudden you and I start chatting and opportunities arise from that conversation that I never thought possible. But because I think the world's friendly, I'm going to reach out. And I'm going to see where this goes. And I, you might just say, Barry, it's not for me. Or you might just say, Barry, I don't know anyone. Right. But if I don't try, um, then I'll never know. So so it's getting into the situation where we consistently just take the next right move that's aligned with our soul's purpose and then with our desires. So it's exciting. Like, I feel that that's, that's probably the most exciting conversation to have in the world, because then everything stems from thought. Everything, like the chairs we're sitting on, the screens we're looking at, the microphones we're talking on, were once a thought in someone's mind, and here we are touching and feeling them in the physical world. So then why can't our futures be the same way? Like they are. It operates by the same laws. So you can create anything from thought. So it's just whether you want to create love or do you want to create something fear-based. And that's a, and just I was sitting here while you were talking, just thinking about it. I've never heard that quote is – the world yeah. is toxic or is it a friendly place? And, you know, a lot of it is what, you know, a lot of people choose to focus their attention on too. I mean, you know, if you focus on yeah. politics, if you focus on the war in Iraq, if you're not yeah. Iraq, yeah. Ukraine, yeah. and if yeah. you focus yeah. on that negativity stuff, you're going to ultimately going to come just full of negative. Yeah, man. Negativity yeah, yeah, or negative yeah. person. Yeah. And, and, you know, That's for funny. example, you know, my life experiences is way different than what, you know, you know, mm. and just like before we said we started recording that, you know, mm. it blows my mind that we're doing this conversation. But we know mm. we're on the other side of the world and we're having this cool. is we're meeting each other besides a few emails we exchange. But, yeah. you know, I choose to focus on, you know, good things in my life and good positive things. And, yeah, I'm aware there's negative stuff out there. But yeah, yeah I do as well. Yeah. But if you yeah. think that, you know, is the world a toxic place? It, it's not all toxic, you know, and then is it? No, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I think most people generally want to be kind to another and, you know, yeah. without that, because we, we couldn't drive on roads without, you know, people just wanting to hit each other all the time or anything like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it, and you know what? Um, if God thought that the world was a toxic place, I'm letting you know we wouldn't be here. Yeah, that's a good point. We wouldn't, man. We we he'll just go Earth 2.0. Let's start do it over. again. Yeah, let's start over. Click of his fingers, and we wouldn't even know what what just happened. Yeah. So I'm letting you know if if that was divine's thought, it's not. So, so if you look at, I don't know if you have children, Chris, but yeah. if you look at, if you look at children's growth, right, you don't, you don't, you don't smack your child for not learning to walk at one. <laughs> right. You don't, man. You just oh. go, well, that's, that's his time. That's her time. They're going to learn to walk when they're ready. Yeah. The lessons that they, so it's almost like, you know, when you talk to a five-year-old, like I've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old, right? And when I talk to my five-year-old, yeah, I can talk to her plainly, but I also have to get to her level of understanding, right? So she can understand what her father's trying to tell her. The two-year-old, even more so, because she's just learning her words right now. So God is the same. God will meet us at our level of of understanding, Mm -hmm. right? And our level of understanding as a species and as a consciousness on the planet right now is at a certain level. So then God will say, well, how do I communicate to these guys so that they understand? So that, so that they comprehend the complexities and the understandings of their growth of what they're going through as a species and as my children, right? So, so it's the same, man. Like he communicates through people on the planet like he's communicating through you, Chris, right now. You know, he's speaking through you, man, like he's speaking through me. He's speaking through people on the planet to understand more joyous, kinder, gentle-based scenarios where our soul lives its true purpose. Like that's... That's God speaking through you. And yeah, sure, I'm not oblivious to the hate and the hatred and the negative. I'm not oblivious to that. I'm not, and I'm not oblivious to fear, but I am sensitive to fear. Like I notice when fear sneaks in now. But before, I just let the rail go. Wherever, wherever fear wants to come in, it can come in, but not anymore. And especially since it's right in the books, because you get to a realization that um, you become very distinctive with the friends and family and, and, and influences that come from a fear-based point of view. And you become really sensitive to the ones that come from an uplifting point of view. And you gravitate to the ones that feel good. Like you consistently, man, you, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and entertain a one-hour conversation on Ukraine. I'm letting you know. I, I touch on it. It could be a two-minute conversation. It could be a, but I'm not going to sit there and let it take every bit of my energy for the next hour right. to talk about how bad things are and how how the Russian leader is losing his mind invading this country. Right? Why? Why should I do that? I've got much better energy to spend in uplifting people and being on great podcast shows like this one. So, man, so you just got to be really distinctive. And then when you start creating from that mindset, you start creating joy-based scenarios. You can start creating joy-based businesses. And, and joy-based friends. So it's um, for me, it's it's almost like you, the fork in the road. You know, you, you start to make really clearer decisions on what sort of life you want to lead. Yeah, mm. that's a great point. And that I heard somebody say it like this one time that, you know, we have so much bandwidth in our brains. Yeah, so, yeah. Probably. Yeah, and if we focus to put, you know, 90% of it just focus on, like we just talked about yeah. negativity, the war in Ukraine, and I want to get on Twitter and have arguments with people all day. And it's like, what are you doing, dude? I mean, how is it? Yeah. I mean, why? You're arguing with strangers, all this. And, you know, and I, I like to be right. Everyone likes to be right. Yeah. But you're spending yeah. that time to focus on all of that hate yeah. and negativity on, on yourself. And that's what you're fulfilling your eight, 12 hour, 16 hour day, whatever you're doing. Right? Yeah. yeah. Whatever you could use that bandwidth and use that energy. And like you said, focus on, I want to go go on this podcast and, or go yeah. write my books or I want to go, yeah. you know, do yeah. something for personal growth or develop yeah. it or spend yeah, time man. with my kids. Yeah. It's like, why? Like, why? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and it's like, who, who said that, you know, this, like, if you want to be great, you know, like, or I forgot how I want to butcher the quote or whatever, but it's like Michael, no. Jordan, doesn't get, Michael Jordan doesn't get on YouTube and read the comments, you know, <laughs> which I don't think he does. But yeah, I mean, that's why and he just ignores all the booze. And usually what is it? The booze are usually coming from the cheap seats anyway. So yeah, they are coming from the cheap seats, 100%. 100%. So it's like, why, 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 man? Just focus yeah. on something else and, and you don't complain and play the victim card when, you know, oh, life is not, yeah, life is not coming at you the way you wanted it to. Right. Spot on, man. And you know what's funny? Like um, <clears throat> I used to argue with people that used to tell me that two and two is five. 
Like if <laughs> if you come to me now and say two and two is five, I'll say all the best, no <laughs> problem. Yep, I agree with you, man. <laughs> Because because what are you going to do, man? You're going to sit there and actually get get a pencil out and show him that two and two is four. Sure. Like, are you going to spend that energy doing that? Or, you know, it's really interesting, Chris. Um, I used to want to when I first started in this gig, right? I used to want to help everyone, and I used to think that everyone wanted personal development help. Like, why would you not? Like, why would you not want to elevate? Sure. You know. And then I've discovered a really rude awakening, man. Like I found that that just because people know something doesn't mean they action it. And and if someone knows that that they want to get better, um, I usually uncover it. Is it a passing interest or is this something they're committed to? Right. And and would you believe, man? Like the people that I come across, ninety percent of people have a passing interest in something. It's not really a commitment. The committed people you hear about all the time. They're the, they're, they're the people that you really re, like you revere and you look up to and you go, wow, man, like, look what they've done. Look at their following or look at the things that they're doing in the world. Yeah. Um, it's, they're, they're the people that commit to an ideal, man. And, and, and in the personal development space that I'm in, um, I have a series of hoops that people need to jump through that lets me know whether they're serious or not. And, well, and if they're not, that's okay. And if they are, that's okay. It, they're both okay. It's just I'll, I've got to know where to spend my energy. So it's kind of like a filter that I use. Um, so, yeah, there's there's so many people that come up to me after my talks that say, oh, yeah, how can I get involved? How can I get involved? We send them an introductory letter and I never hear from them again. So so it's uh, if you don't want to invest that money in yourself, if you don't want to do that, that's okay. You're not for me. And I wish you I wish you all the best, man, on your journey. So two and two is five for you. That's okay. Like that's like and and here's the thing, like we gotta appreciate as well that everyone is at different learning curves on the planet. Like just because you've got a more direct route to the top of the mountain doesn't mean that people take the direct route. Some people circle the bottom of the mountain for 20 years yeah. before they start climbing it. And and this is the thing that I'm writing about in the next book, is um that's okay. Um, and, and the other thing to think about is this, right? Sorry, I'm rambling, but no, it's fine. It's perfect. You're, you're, cool. you're, you're spitting. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I could, last month I was speaking in Sydney. It was about 200 people in the room. Right. And, and I have this mental, um, before I walk on stage, I have first, the first thing I do is I say, God, just use me as your vessel, whatever you want to come through me from you, just let the words come out. Right. So that's the first prayer I say. The second, the second internal knowing that I know is this. I don't know where everyone's at in the room with regards to making decisions in their life, like big decisions, right? And I think about, I think about at level 10, people make a life-changing choice. It could be to leave an abusive partner. It could be to start a business. It could be to cure cancer. It could be whatever at 10. And I don't know if people are at threes, fours, sixes, ones, zeros, nines, whatever. I don't know where people are at. Right. 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 So what I do know and what I take comfort in is that when I leave that room, everyone raises a number. The sixes go to sevens, the threes go to fours, the zeros go to ones, the nines make decisions, hmm. the eights go to nines. And that's the point, Chris, you know, every person that inspires us, every person that we inspire, what we're doing is we're taking them up a number every single time. And isn't that the aim of life? Like, yep. isn't, isn't that the meaning, man? Like that, that we influence the world in such a way that people have faith in their own abilities and in their own talents and their own potential to make beautiful life choices, brave and courageous life choices based on who they are as people. Like, yeah. isn't that the point of, yeah. for me? And, and I, I've got two daughters now and, you know, gratitude plays a big part in our lives. And, and we have a little thank you Jesus night, you know, every night with my five-year-old and we run through the things we're thankful for, you know, That's and cool. she's five years old. So she mentions, she mentions like stuff like pictures and holiday houses and whatever, whatever, but it's really the, the stuff that, that is inside. That's the stuff you're thankful for. Um, but it's cool, man. Like it's, it's exciting to be living in this way. Yeah. It's one of those, uh, that, that quote, and again, you know, I don't want to be all about quotes, but it's, I forgot no, how it goes, but it's like, well, we're not meant to exist, but we're meant to live, you know? And yeah. like when you said like, yeah. Yeah, we get inspired and fulfill yeah. and, and, yeah, leave, and leave, yeah. And leave the world better than you are better than what it is when you leave or whatever, it, yeah. whatever you say it is. And then like, you know, somebody yeah. told me one time that, and talking about, you know, like I said, I don't have any kids. I'm just 
single dad of two dogs, but, uh, <laughs> that's um, <not> cool. <laughs> but, uh, um, I forgot, I lost my point, but yeah, so he, he, he made a point like this, that, you know, he has two or three kids and he was telling me that, you know, for each generation, like, a, you know, he wants them to have a better life than he did. And yeah. then when they yeah. have kids, he wants them to have a better yeah. life. Yeah. Than they yeah. Had. And so on and just keep passing it down and keep growing the, you know, the family, whatever you want to say, heritage tree or whatever. And just everyone yeah. keep living, leaving the world better than when you, you know, than it was. And it was yeah. it meant so much to me. It's like, yeah, you know, be inspired. Learn, Don't be in, stuck in your ways. Let's get out of our comfort zone. Let's do something amazing. You know, if you're unhappy with how your life is going, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. look for these signs that we were talking about earlier, the green lights and like, and take an opportunity yeah. and take a chance on something. I mean, at yeah. least it's fun to at least say, yeah, I took a chance one time and it didn't work out, but now I know maybe next time it could be, it could yeah. be better. Right. Well, yeah, because you really, it, it actually will be better because you start more intelligently this time, sure. yeah. you know, like you've got the wisdom from the failure to drive you forward. Um, if we could just, as a species, if we could just let go of our embarrassment of failure. Good point. If we could just let that go, man, we'd have we'd have um, no almost no obstacles to hold us back yeah. to do what we want to do. We would have almost none because, you know, we start a business, we fail, everyone points a finger. You know, we have a marriage, it doesn't succeed, everyone points a finger. We, we're kind of worried about the, the finger pointing. Um, but what's interesting is... Um, <laughs> In being Greek, there's this saying we have um, translated, when you point fingers at someone, there's three fingers pointing back at you. And 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 it's a really beautiful saying because it's self-judgment, man. Like when someone judges you, when the world judge, if someone in, in, in the world judges your decisions, I'm letting you know what they're actually doing is judging what they feel towards what they're looking at rather than judging what you're doing. Yeah. Or what you failed at. So there's all judgment is self judgment. So <clears throat> what I'm trying to do now is is um, judge people less, and and in that in doing that, I judge myself less. Good. And when I judge myself less, I'm more kinder to myself. And when I do fail, it's like no big deal. It's like okay, shit, I did, I failed. Um, what did I learn from that? How much money did I lose? Or how much time did I lose? Or whatever it is. And then I use that fuel to start more intelligently. Love it. And, and guys, the people that you admire in the world, everyone, like every person that you admire that's reached these, these huge heights, right, mm-hmm. they've gone through this thinking process. I'm letting you know because they haven't gone from birth to success. They've gone from birth to trial and error to trial and error to trial and error and then through failure, through failure, through failure, and they haven't really cared who's looking at them, but they've just keep going. And then one day they get to a level in public where you go, wow, this person's got followers or this person's got a good business or whatever, but you haven't seen their history of, of their frustrated moments. Mm-hmm. And, and then transcending those moments and going, oh, well, c'est la vie. So what? You know what I mean? Like I'm going to keep going. I'm going to, this feels right for me. So the second book, I, w- I wasn't going to write a second book, Chris, yeah. um, but something in me about <clears throat> six months ago, there was this yearning again. Um, have you seen Rocky Six? I've seen them all, bro. I love them. Okay. So, so you know when Sylvester Stallone was talking about something in the basement, mm-hmm. you know, in Rocky Six, like he's like, I've got something in the basement. And what, what is his, uh, his brother-in-law was like, what do you mean in the basement? There's like meat down there in the cellar. He goes, no, 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 it's, 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 it's in here. There's a yearning. Um, he, t- he speaks about, you know, wanting to be back in the ring again, right? Right. And, and it's, that, it's that feeling of um, do you listen to that? Is, it, is, it, is there something in you that you feel that you should be doing and you keep ignoring it, keep ignoring it, keep ignoring it? And, and one day, I promise you, it'll, it'll go away if you keep ignoring it. It'll go to someone else. That yearning will, it will find expression through another human being that's willing to give it a shot. Mm-hmm. So right now it's with you. So you've got to know whether this is important enough for you to do or whether that, whether that, um, that, that idea that wants to be born in you, whatever it is, that will find expression through another human being. So, so right now it's with you. So the book right now is with me. And I'm like, okay, I'm listening. Got you. I'm going to start writing again. And, and um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's exciting. And, and it's funny, like I don't have any idea of structure or, or title. I was listening to a song one day, and in that song was the lyrics move the mountain. And I'm Christian, mm-hmm. so 
I love Christ and move the mountain just seemed like a really fitting title for me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then look at the parables of Jesus of Christ, you know, he's, one of them was Matthew 13, 20, I think it was with the grain of a mustard seed, you know, you, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. You know, this is Christ talking and you think to yourself, what was he actually meaning when he was saying those things? And, and it's all about that faith within God and within yourself. Like, there's divinity and there's man, and we can co-create together, right? Together, and and I think that's where God was saying you have to have that faith, and you can do whatever you want in your life, but if if there's something in you that that doesn't believe or that doesn't have that faith, then all of a sudden um, that ID will leave you. I honestly believe it will leave you, and then you'll have regret in 20, 30, 40, exactly. 50 years. Going, oh, why didn't I do that? Like, what was the big deal? You know? Yeah, no, I, I agree a hundred percent. Just and, and yeah. for the example, and touching on that, just for yeah. this podcast, that I remember it was like year twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen. You know, and yeah, me and my friends, we've always talked about you know starting some type of YouTube channel. Starting, we didn't podcasts yeah. were bit or were around them, but it wasn't as big as they were now, but it's like, we got to do something, you know, we all are together all the time. We got to, you know, we all wanted to create something, you know, we had this creativity bug in us. Right. And I remember the one time I actually went to a friend and told him, Hey, I'm going to start a podcast. And his immediate reaction was like, no, that's, that's dumb. Why? He's like, what are you going to do? And I was like, and I was immediately just shut down and I let that, you know, that just hammer beat me down. I was like, yeah, maybe that was a dumb idea, but you know, yeah. one of the pros of the pandemic, you know, I still had that yearning like you're talking about. Yeah. And yeah. when the pandemic hit, I was like, you know, as one of those things I finally and I've said this a hundred times on here, folks, so I'm sorry. But, you know, I, you know, I got to reflect a little bit on my life. And it's like, you know, where did the last 10 years go? You know, yeah. you know I, yeah. I found myself in a, yeah, I found myself in a situation like, you know, I didn't ask questions. I just kept going down the same road. And then all of a sudden, it's like, wow, 10 years. Man, how yeah, long? Kind of. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, is this where I've been wanting to do? Is this what have I done? You know, and. And it finally was like, this is my chance, you know, whatever. I know if, if I start a podcast, I just got to do it. And if it's going, the first episodes might be complete shit, but that's okay. Yeah. You know, and I don't care. And I, you know, and I'm putting myself out there too, is what I wanted to do. And awesome, like, yeah. And I was like, you know, I, was, I got, you know, till the, I never thought it would go this far and I'm glad it did. Cause you and I can have this conversation now, but yeah, it was like, you feel that yearning. And I, I truly believe if I would have kept ignoring it, like you were just saying that it would eventually, yeah, probably would have came out of me or moved on to another person. And, but yeah. then, you know, five years from now, two years from now, whatever, I'd be like, damn, why didn't I never, why didn't I do it? You know, why didn't I just at least take a chance, you know, take that leap of faith. Like we said in the beginning. Yeah. Well, well done Chris for doing it. And, and you know, the most special part about what you do is um, you don't know how far the ripples will go. Right. Yeah. You don't, man. Like you don't, we don't, we don't know. Like, like uh, not to sound like um, over the top here, but, but, you know, there could be someone right now contemplating suicide. Sure. And all of a sudden they hear your voice or they hear my voice or they hear a past guest that you've had and they just walk off the ledge, like they, they walk back from the ledge and they don't jump, right? And, and we don't, we're not privy to that. We don't know. Right. Well, we might know if they get in contact, but, but a lot of the times we don't. So, so for me, um, I keep saying like a little silent prayer. I was on a podcast in New York yesterday morning, same time. And uh, Walt, who was the host, was saying to me, well, Barry, I just want to say thank you to the people that you'll never hear from. And, wow. and it was such, such a beautiful statement, man. It's like, you'll never hear from these people. Like 99% of them, you'll never hear from them. But I just want to say thank you on behalf of them. And, man, what a beautiful thing to say. That's like, great. like. You know, like it just, it gave me goosebumps. It, 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 gave, it gave me shivers to actually hear that. Um, and this is the thing with this podcast. Like we don't know, man. We don't know how far the ripples will go. But as long as we're putting out good content and inspirational content and we're, we're, we're talking people back from that ledge, you know, worst case scenarios here, um, what, what more is there? Like people say the world's going in a bad place. It's not. I'm letting you know it's not. It's just that fear is shouting a little bit louder than love. And 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 the more podcast, like I think there's two million podcasts in the world. Probably more like than that. Oh, there's more than that. Okay. I so I don't don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure I feel like there is. Okay. <laughs> well, well, can you imagine if 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 eighty percent of those are around this kind of inspiration or knowledge or understandings, yeah. then millions of people are listening. So that we're not, those podcasts aren't having one big voice saying we're teaching love. 
It's just, it's just people doing their thing privately. So the moment we turn off the fear, all of a sudden you can hear the love, man. And there's so much of it. It's yeah. just, you gotta, you gotta be good at turning off the fear every now and then. Yeah. And, that, and that's the thing is just, again, this, like you said, turn it off and tune into yeah. something that's going to enhance your life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just and, turn down the volume a bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just like, you know, you know, I think that's what, the narrative is now is that we got to put out what fear mongling out there. And that yeah. guy, that's what draws eyes at and this, that when people yeah. get on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and yeah. like their algorithms are focused, like, Oh, let's show them okay. more of stuff blowing up and more. Hate yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're focused on, yeah. on that. It's like, get on. Yeah. And I'm like, if you get on there and you start changing your algorithm where you're typing in like inspirational content or motivational yeah. stuff or watching yeah, yeah. Rocky crush, you know, <laughs> Draco or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. I mean, and that's like, very uplifting for me. And, you know, sometimes like even before work, I'm sitting there listening to one of those motivational YouTube things where it's got the yeah. music in the back and like the spark. Yeah. And other quote. Love it. Yeah, Love man, it. let's go. You know, it's, we'll run through a brick wall, but it's just, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, what do you choose to focus on? And, yeah. and that, yeah. And like, you know, and I feel like those beliefs or those focuses start to define your experiences in life. And then, and then you're like, whoa, you're done. Then you're like, and then you're, you're a terrible person to be around. Like you said, you know, if you're out to eat and we're all talking about, you know, uplifting things and life and love and happiness mm-hmm. and inspiration and motivation. And then one guy wants to talk about, you know, again, the war in Ukraine. It's like, bring the energy down, bro. I mean, Debbie Downer. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. And, and you know what? They'll probably, if you say that, they'll probably say, what, you don't want to know what's happening in the world? And then you'll say, well, actually, I know what's happening in the world. I just don't want Ukraine at this table because I think there's enough war in the world and I don't want a war at this table sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like just sure. for me, it's, um, you know, it's like eating a plate of food that you really dislike. Like if you've got foods that you really do not like um, and someone forces them down you, what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and eat them all or are you going to go, you know, man, thanks so much for this, but, you know, I've, uh, from past experience, when I eat nuts, I blow up, you know, like I've got a nut allergy or whatever it is, you know, like, sure, sure, sure. You, you know, you know, so you don't, you don't try to force feed anyone, but what you do do is you stand in your own energy and then you just go, you know what, this is me. And if you think that I'm being naive, that's up to you. I don't care. Two and two is five. No problem. Like, like you just got to let it go. Like it's, it's, it's really hard to do because I'm, I'm quite sensitive as well. Like if someone says something that hurts me, it does get to me, but, um, can I afford it to get to me long term? And is it worth the inspiration that I'm going to be not giving others now? No. So I just look at it and I go, okay, well, that's your opinion. Yeah. Call the best. And then I grow relationships and I grow friendships and I grow. Um, it's interesting. Someone said the other day, I don't pick friendships. I pick energy. Mm. Right. And then if, if, if I allow your energy to be in my circle, um, um, or if I allow your energy to affect me, um, um, it's actually a really good sign of friendship. Um, and, and you really do, you do not pick people. You don't pick Tom or you don't pick Peter or you don't pick Barry or you don't pick Chris. What you do is you've, your intuition is going in front of you and you're feeling what sort of person you're in front of. And then you ask yourself whether you want to keep being in that energy field. And this is the same with business partners and it's the same with relationships, right? Like you feel your way forward. And um, in my past, I was like, bring everything on, like all of it. I want all the energy. I don't care if it's good, bad, ugly. I don't care. And all of a sudden, I was this mixed bag of total crap because I was the leftovers of what everyone else was feeling and thinking. And now I'm like, man, I want quality food. I want quality fuel in my car. I don't want – because when you inspire, Chris, you can't afford to have dirty fuel. You know what I mean? I agree 100%. Yeah. And and – and here's a good question. So, mm. right, in my in my head, it's a good question. <laughs> but uh, good, go for it. So, when you have you always had this mindset and want to be inspiring, no. or was it when you no. had that epiphany at the cemetery? Listen, I it's going back to further still for me. Um, <clears throat> my parents divorced when I was seven, okay. seven years old. <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, my I really looked up to my dad like really, really looked up to my dad. Like he was, a, he was a survivor. He was a thriver. Um, and then, um, I started working for him, um, out of high school and, um, he had a really successful business at the time. Um, but then I found out that a lot of the things he was doing was super dodgy. 
like like really kind of underhanded things, right? Like illegal stuff, like to get the sales over the line. Okay. And I lost a lot of faith in the person that I love the most. Um, and um, I looked, and then since then, I'm like, I'm 44 now, but since those times, I look back at, I hear people ringing me and saying, you know, did you know your father was like this? And my mum was saying, oh, he had girlfriends at the time, apart from me and, you know, his family. And and my world came crashing down with my dad. Um, and he's still around today, but dad dad's made some really, really poor decisions in his own life. Like he's 70 years old and he's still making poor decisions. So he hasn't learned any lessons at all. And, and I look at the decisions he made and because we've got the same biology, I go, what would have he done in this situation? And then I do the opposite. (laughs) It's really odd. It's like, you know, your greatest teachers are sometimes not the teachers that you think they are. Sometimes your greatest teachers are the people that do wrong by you because then they teach you how to do right. So uh, from, say, seven years old all the way up to my late 20s, um, I was craving his love still and I was ignoring all the negativity in his life uh, that people were saying. Um, and then, you know, I went and worked for him. That didn't work out. He actually fired me. He actually, I, I did something underhanded and I'm like, I've got to get out of here and we like parted ways. Um, and then we got to a situation where I hit rock bottom after I left his his, his business because his business was about to sink and I thought, how could you allow this to sink? Like, you know, you're a smart man, like, and you saw the signs coming years ago. So yeah. why could you not make decisions here? Like I thought, so here is me, I'm judging again, you know, him, his, his decisions. So then I, yeah, man, then I started, I hit rock bottom. I, I just bought myself a little place and I had no job. And I had to start selling shoes. Like that was the first job I could find is selling shoes at a shoe shop called Echo. I don't know if you know the Echo shoe brand. Wait, ECCO? No, maybe I don't then. So Echo is kind of like, like the third biggest footwear brand in the world now. They've got manufacturing facilities anyway. They're a huge business. Anyway, so I started working for Echo, sold a lot of shoes for them, um, and then um, um, worked a second job at a department store for till till, uh, till midnight that night. So I would finish the shoe shop at five. I'd put on another shirt at six, and I'd work till midnight. Wow. And I did that for two years just to pay my mortgage. Wow. Um, until a better position came up at the shoe store where I could supplement my night shift hours <laughs> for day hours. Nice. And then, yeah, and then climbed in the shoe industry, stayed in the shoe industry, you know, till 36, 37, and then had this epiphany at this graveyard, um, this yearning in me, the history of where my father made poor decisions. And I still love him very much, but um, he's very, very toxic for me. Like he's very, very toxic. And I've learned just to separate my mindset from his mindset. And, you know, I envy people that have close relationships with their dads. I don't have that. Um, and, 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 and it's formed the basis of the work that I do today. Like it's the, it's the, I dig into that pain to be able to show the inspiration because I've lived there for so long. So, so it ends up being a catalyst. It's interesting, like life will take you down some painful roads to be able to, to turn that pain into fuel and then to fuel it into really great inspiration. It's like God recycles every emotion. Yeah. Yeah. You he need to have humbling experiences like that just so you can learn yeah. to turn that into a motivated, motivational yeah. factor or whatever. I mean, I hate yeah. when people have to go down those roads and I don't wish bad on anybody, but yeah. yeah I mean, no, no. And, yeah. and, and, and it, it's, it's, it's interesting because when you're going through the pain, right, you don't view it as a catalyst for growth. You view it as a pain in the ass, like, like you hate it. And, and you're losing friends and you're eating wrong and you're not exercising and your mindset's full of rubbish and, and you're feeling that life sucks. And I get it. Like if you're listening, I get it. Like life sucks. Yeah. Sometimes it really does. Um, how long you stay in that is the question because you, I've known people that have stayed there for decades and it's formed a part of who they are. Sure. And, and I know people that have gone, all right, well, it's happened. I'm, I'm in a, I'm in the crapper right now. Um, I wonder what the next right move would look like being out of the crapper. I wonder how that would look. Right. And then you start thinking the mind starts going, I wonder if it'd be to call Barry or to talk to my accountant about starting a business or would it be to, you know, ring my best friend who had a, who who knows this girl who could be a great fit for me or whatever it is, you know, kind of, 
Like, what would that next move look like for you? And then the brain starts thinking about the positive aspects of where life could go. Right. All of a sudden, man, you're in a situation where you're not out, but you're climbing. Exactly. And then all you need is one good podcast show to listen to or one good person to talk to. And all of a sudden, they just give you that nudge, that inspirational nudge to say, you know, well done for getting out so yeah. far. Like, well done. And I'm here for you if you need anything. Just so you know, you're not alone. <laughs> you... I'm here for you sort of thing. And then all of a sudden um, things start to look up and then you start writing books and being on podcasts. And you start to- <laughs> no, that's a great point just because I've, I've had a friend at one time that yeah. was stuck in one of these negative behavioral loops because of his yeah. father and yeah. that he thought because of the way his relationship was with his father that his life was just going to kind of be a negative yeah. state for the rest yeah. of his life. And this is one of my – one defining or shining moments in my life. But I remember we, I was working at Walmart during college and we were in, mm-hmm. back in the store or whatever, talking and then for whatever reason, I don't know what it was, but my parents got divorced when I was three years old. So no. my relationship with my father's not, he's in the picture, but he's not in the picture, you know? Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and we only see like holidays and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah. that's, that's yeah. not this part of the story, but I was like, you know, mm-hmm. you're not your father, dude. You don't have to live your life like him. You know, you can, mm-hmm change the way your mind's looking at do a 180 and look at life differently. Don't look at it this way, but look at it like, Ooh, I, you know, I get to go do X, Y, and Z, or I get to go over here or I get to go see my friends. I don't have to go hang out with my dad. You don't have to be that person. I know he's still your dad and he's your blood. He's part of your life, but just cause he does something doesn't mean you have to do it. And and he, and it it was like a light bulb went off in his head and he was like, Awesome. Yeah. And it was just like, and I don't know what made me say that that day or what happened, but it was just kind of one of my things that, you know, it was like, well, I mean, I guess a negative outlook on life and it doesn't have to be that way, you know? And mm-hmm. it's like, mm-hmm. you can make it like what we've been saying almost this entire conversation was that mm-hmm. make it like what you want to be. You know, if you have a goal in mind, if you have, you know, people you or things you want to do and you see yourself becoming in this terrible negative behavioral habit or whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. And what is that quote? Mm-hmm. Like you surround the, the Five people you hang out with the most are just yeah, probably, yeah, 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 yeah. You become the average. average you're the average. Yeah. Shit. And mm-hmm. so if you're hanging out with a bunch of, you know, and I don't want to call anybody or be mm. terrible on anybody, but a bunch of drug addicts who are just hanging out watching Netflix all day and doing really bad things for them, it's, you're probably going to be going down that road. So, yeah, you get out of their way and you get out of a toxic environment and you change mm-hmm. your ways and you can do anything you want to do. I'm a firm believer if you really want to do something in life. You can, especially with we're in the best one of the best times to be alive right now. You know, we are, man, with the most opportunities available to exactly. us. Like that's what I'm online. Exactly. Right. You can do anything you want to. You can learn anything you want to. Yeah. And just like yeah. just sitting here on your computer. Yeah, you can YouTube it, research it, take the time to do something. And you yeah. can make that big you can make magic happen if you want to, you know? Yeah, man. You you can make miracles happen. Absolutely. It's 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 really interesting because, you know, like um to give you a bit of an idea, uh, in twenty twenty two uh, I'll probably be on about sixty odd podcasts. So it was about one a week. Last year, I was on none. So just to give you an idea how things turn around and how things change, it's it's really interesting. Like uh, you get to a situation where um, if you take the next right move, the momentum of the current mm. can take you along, but wow. you have to hop into the momentum of the current on your own. Like the current very seldom finds you. You've got to find the current, you know, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you kind of you kind of flow with the current and 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 you can maneuver within the water to to how you feel to where the current is taking you so it's really cool like but you've got to be the one to initiate the swim you've got to be the one to initiate the current and oh, to find the current and it's it's something that i've that i've learned it's just when you're on purpose and when you've made a decision that you want to do something or you want to just climb out of a hole or you want to find a great partner in life or you want to buy a house or you want to find a job or start a business or cure from self cure from cancer like i know a guy that's cured himself from stage four cancer man. Wow. It's crazy. and if you want to do that there are ways you can do it it's just it's just make a decision and then you think about well how do you make that decision barry i've got so much negativity in me well listening to a great podcast is one way yeah. reading a book is another way that's eliminating right. toxic friends is another way yeah. eating right is another way like you've got 10, 10 areas that you could probably implement in the next week 
that could dramatically shift everything. But do you have the tenacity and the courage to leave the comfort that you're in yeah, <laughs> to then make those life-based decisions? That's yeah. a big part of it where people are so scared to leave that comfort yeah. zone. But that's where growth yeah, comes, you know, is to get out of that yeah. comfort zone, even if it's a small step, you know, into yeah. the, that whatever you want to say, the barrier or the out of bounds or the comfort zone or whatever you mm. learn from, you learn from. And like we said, if it sucks, get back in there, then learn again, yeah. take another chance. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I was just going to quickly say, um, I'm a big believer. I heard you say before, Chris, about, you know, listening to the odd motivational speech on YouTube to try and yeah. get you motivated. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, um, I I do that as well. Like for me, Les Brown was a big catalyst. I don't know if you know Les Brown. I'll, I'll add him to my list here. Oh, man, you'll love Les. Okay. Um, and he was the catalyst for me and a guy called Wayne Dyer, um, who died in 2015, funny enough, the same year I wrote my book. Um, he actually turned around and he, those two, Wayne Dyer and Les Brown were the catalysts for me to, um, to start the book. So for me, the motivation was there, but here's the, here's the clincher. Motivation has to fuel inspiration, mm. right? So inspiration is an inside job. Motivation is an outside job. Okay. Right. A, a lot of people will go and see a motivational speaker. You feel pumped. You feel excited. You know, you go to listen to them and you take all these strategies away. You go home. The kids are screaming. You, you, your job sucks. Um, the house mortgage repayments are due and you've got no petrol in the car. And you, that motivation quickly dissipates. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the whole idea is to find what you're inspired about and go and see if you want to see someone that's motivating or hear someone that's motivating and let the motivation fuel that idea within you, whatever you're inspired about. And then I promise you, you will take that inspiration and you will take that idea where it needs to go. That inspiration, that idea will be birthed in you. And then all of a sudden you'll, you'll be an expression for its outlet in reality. So it's really cool. So for me, um, I used to just listen to motivation and then, and then I used to feel pumped for two hours and then it used to go. I have to listen to it again and again and again, but now I listen to it less because I'm, I've got the well of inspiration within me flowing. Right. So yeah, this this podcast is I get so much from it because it's 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 fueling that inspiration of the mission that I've got. And th this is the thing you've got to you've got to try and define what inspires you as a person. Sure. Like what is that, man? Like you've got to really crunch down and laser in on it and define what what inspires you. Is it saving whales, you know, in 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 the seas near Japan? Is it is it you know helping kids out of orphanages? Is it is it what is it like? What inspire like start a business, find true love. What, what inspires you? And then kind of using motivation as a tool to help you fuel that inspiration within you. So it's so if you can do that, then the motivation won't dissipate. It won't just go after a while. It'll actually it'll keep kind of like an engine. It'll keep, it'll keep idling inside of you and fueling that inspiration. That's why these podcasts are so important sure. because we're fueling people, you know, and, and that's what we need. And I fuel myself and Chris, I'm sure that you feel oh, yeah. yourself right now. That's cool, man. It's, it it's super exciting. <laughs> A whole new energy, but very yeah. be respectful of your time. So I think, no. should, I think we should take it home on that right there. That was a beautiful. Yeah, thing. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if people want to find your books, if they want to find you and anything you want to plug, feel free to do that. No, well, yeah, just go to Barry Nicolai.com. Um, B A W R Y N I C O L A O U.com. Um, everything's there. You see the new book there. Um, the pre-order list is probably close to 3000 now. So it's really wow. exciting. It's cool, man. It's cool. It's um, it's all about making sure. And just quickly, I was just going to let you know, Chris, um, the second half of the book is nuggets of wisdom. So like full page quotes. And then the first half of the book is a normal book. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. but, uh, if you want to flick to the second half, when you eventually get your copy, um, you'll see these one page quotes. Cause sometimes what we need is just a one page quote uh -huh. to get us moving. That's, that's me, man. That's me right there. I love quotes. That's me as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's that one quote, man. Make your day right there. So. Yeah, yeah, it will. So I've decided to divvy the book up in two halves like that. So yeah, so you'll um, you'll I think you'll enjoy it. If you get oh. it, you get it. If you don't, I still wish you all the best, and I hope you find, hope you find the path that's most aligned with you. Barry, you're a badass dude, dude. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Chris. We're out here, folks. <laughs> Take care.